Hi student teachers, welcome to Teaching Grade 6 Mathematics, Shape and Space, specifically Properties of 3D Objects. What are we to learn today? We are to discuss the lesson plan for Grade 6 Mathematics, Properties of 3D Objects. The second would be to determine how to use a game along with hands-on aids using 3D shape models um, to do a worksheet in groups. What is your lesson plan step by step? The first page would be to emphasize the CAPS specific focus. Uh, according to CAPS, we are to look at the range of objects to recognize, visualize and name 3D objects in the environments and geometric settings and really focus on um, rectangular prisms, cubes, tetrahedrons, uh, pyramids and really the similarities and differences between tetrahedrons and other pyramids. And CAPS really focuses on the build and the build le learners um, abilities to describe, sort and compare 3D object, objects in terms of the number and shape of the faces and number of vertices and edges. Summary of the content to cover, according to CAPS, we are to cover how to teach, describe, sort and compare 3D objects in terms of the number and shape of faces, number of vertices vertices and edges. What is our objective? Our objective is very simple. If this lesson is to teach you how to describe, sort and compare 3D objects in terms of number and shapes of faces, number of vert uh, vertices and edges, and how does this curriculum integrate with other um, subjects in case there is one. This topic of integration is a topic that grows gradually into arts, the use of spatial shapes to construct imagery, images, and this topic also goes along with natural science and technology structure topic, which emphasizes how many properties or objects are made out of combined shapes and how polygons are built a bigger shape or structure as it does in mathematics. Alright, still on lesson planning, teaching strategies in specific, but before we actually mention that, let's look how to, uh, what is it considered to be made about the learners in relation to this concept. Well, it's very important to keep the content uh, to consider the le uh, learner's attention span, it's best to deliver as much as possible within 15 minutes and do an interaction, interaction activities the next uh, 10 minutes with them or the rest of the lesson. Teaching strategies, well, for that we use three specifically. Uh, direct instruction as a teaching a strategy to introduce new concepts as limited prior knowledge, showing the teacher-centered lesson with strong research of the lesson, to direct how to look at the content and demonstrate it to the learners by the teacher, and this in, in this in this hot content the range of objects to recognize, visualize, and name the 3D options in the environments and the geometric settings with visual examples from worksheets and focusing on prisms, cubes, and many more shapes and the differences as the worksheets actually directs us to do that. Um, within the game, it's very important to put them in small groups to do the worksheet together. Keep in mind that in the game, we are going to consider each column that has four questions, but one of them are actually two. Each one is worth two um, marks, except for the exception of one of them that has two questions and one. And each column um, states out each round has uh, a question for a shape and answer the properties of that shape and so this is where small group comes in very handy because it helps the the lessons to achieve and communicate with each other the ideas that 
the concept is trying to teach them and it really helps the child to understand the ranges of the objects uh, recognize visual and name 3d objects and environments and geometric settings just basically the differences and similarities between the shapes as the hands-on activity requires the learner to work in groups to answer questions about the shape shapes properties from a number of vertices a number of edges a number of sh a number and shape of faces that's the question that has two points in it and it really focuses on building the learner's ability to describe sorts and compare 3d objects as a uh, in terms of um the number and shape of faces and number of vertices and edges this shifts the focus on the learner being a passive recipient recipients of information to them being active seekers of understanding to achieve retain retention and mastery of the concepts this develops the learner's oral communication skills skills while learning the curriculum content the last um a teaching strategy this one is um to really be a bridge between direct and um, direct instruction and learner-centered instruction it enforces a learner to speak to talk learn listen and respond to other people's ideas on the content allowing the learner to be open-minded to be to be diff to hear a different perspective of the content with reason of course that's important and the aim to develop the knowledge understanding or judgments of the con concepts under discussion it's very important for the teacher to keep asking questions of the learner during the discussion to improve the seeking and gaining of knowledge instead of just rather being uh, them um, rather just demonstrating the the teacher the knowledge herself in it's very important for the child to give back to the content as uh, feedback and really um, sharing with the classmates all right still on teaching strategies the teacher uses this uh, discussion strategies to go over the class um, ex class exercise together with the learners the questions revised and then null revising the questions of the shapes properties from the number of vertices number of edges and name a number and shape of faces of the 3D shape really focuses on uh, the learner's ability to describe, sort, and compare 3D shapes in terms of number, shape of faces, and number of vertices and edges. These um, strategies, um, since the learners uh, see the sequence of developments, they construct themselves their own understanding from the activities, and the teacher does go over the uh, go over the, uh, the activity with the learners to reinforce and construct understanding of the contents that was learned earlier. Okay, looking at introductory base, this, uh, this part is when you are about to open the lesson and it's always better to revise the properties of shapes and letting them know that the circle um, has no corner or it's curved and the square is different because it has sharp corners and equal ends you know making it an equilateral so now within that you are supposed to also it's always excuse me recommending to really find out the difference like explain to the child what's the difference between 2d and 3d shape because after all you are going to teach them properties of 3d objects so in my point of view and what i did in my class i drew out the square first and let them know in high school you are going to learn something that's called the x-axis and the y-axis i drew it on the board too and i along the board i drew let me just draw it, draw it with you. Um, I drew a, a vertical line and I said this is an x axis. In high school, you are going to do that. And this is a y axis, okay? So within the line, there's something that they draw and 
this is very identical to what they call it a square it's flat is it not and so this only has x this has only y those we call dime dime dimensions okay so there's two of them there's the one going up and there's the one going on the side if you were to draw a shape with those uh, two dyna uh, dimensions I got again okay it's gonna make up a shape and there will be angles uh, along those corners you know uh, letting them know that previously they learned uh, right angles as it was in caps and with that you let them know that the one going up vertical which is the X is what height okay you let them know the one on uh, horizontal is what length and so if you were to really build more knowledge okay there's something else called a third di uh, dimension okay this is what I'll call Z and so now that third di uh, dimension makes up 3d because there's a third there's a third axis okay so that's how you teach them oh, the relevance of the di dimensions okay and now they know what with the difference between 2d and 3d what is it it's flat why because it has two dimensions but for 3d that has what three dimensions the width is what a solid so give them an idea that this is very relevant in the future in the present so that they'll be more focused on what they know and what what they are about to learn they're getting curious at this point okay moving on to lesson planning and teaching teaching and learning okay face this is when I pull up my worksheets and according to caps it really recommends us going through what is a, a prime um, a prime premise and going through what is a edge and a vertex okay let me just read through my lesson plans using direct instruction and explain 3d shapes uh, objects and shapes having three dimensions uh, dimensions which is width okay height and depth okay that's actually very mixed up excuse me this is supposed to be length um an example of 3d shape is a prism or a sphere okay this is where i actually use this knowledge on my worksheets let's read on the worksheets um explaining what is a prism a prism is a 3d shape with two parallel line it's important for you to um emphasize the meaning of parallel because kids sometimes tend to forget and you explain that a parallel line is a line that never intersects for an example um for an example if you were to draw um, a ruler hey this is one ruler. Mm -mm. this is a ruler as a whole well suddenly the lining the outlines of the ruler intersects never because they're running along the same direction so that's how you explain it to a child's simplest term with something they see and make it something logical to them okay um let's read the sentence one more time a prism is a 3d shape with a pair of two parallel lines um, and it's identical it has identical faces that which are uh, polygons okay the other faces are maybe rectangles and it has right angles and um, parallel faces a pyramid is a 3d shape object with a base that is a polygon okay here's the vertus part a vertus is the points at which these uh, uh two these two or more um faces of an 3d object meet okay basically it's trying to tell you where the two lines meet is the vertex okay 
for this um, definition, it talks mainly about where the faces meet. It's very relevant. It's much more relevant to the cone, the cone, excuse me, the cone, because, well, as you can see, it literally like one face one face into you know a circular situation and one face so to say it's face of one or more faces of a 3d object meets it's very like relevant to this okay and for other uh, objects too of course but if you want to make it much more simple for the child say the corners of the shape They'll instantly get that because this is technically a corner too. This is a corner, okay? So it's a vertex. But the, the more the more specific definition is what right? the faces where they meet. So H is the line. Keep that in mind. Where two or more faces meet, okay? The line specifically line. This is the line. So vertex is what the corner, the edge is where the two, the two faces meet. Okay, one face, two face, one face, two is the line. Okay, that's an edge. That's the way you can possibly explain it to the child. Okay, so caps, along with just going through my one more time. Explaining the vertex, we done that okay. Have uh, the different shapes within reality, oh, okay, and the hands-on. So that's the second thing. According to caps, we need to find the relative things that uh, shapes present itself around an environment or a dramatic setting. So for that, we are to give an example of 3D shapes. For an example, a pineapple surface. Um, but the much more obvious one, if you if you are driving to school, your dad or mom or dad is driving you to school, you will notice most probably what a truck carrying what a tr a container. Which shape is a container? It's a rectangular prism. So it's much more better for you to recognize what they know and use it for the learning. Honey honeycomb, okay. Honey, honeycomb, honeybee comb. So, come on. Which shape is that? And it's why 3D now. So, those are the relevant things you can really mention to the kid. There's more, of course. The next, uh, oh, let's just quickly go through what CAPS require us. CAPS says, uh, the object uh, learners need to know the names are rectangular prism. We've covered that with the container relativeness. We are about to do another hands-on activity using that. Cubes, trihedrons and other um, pyramids, similarities and differences. About to get to that. Features of to learners to use to distinguish describe sort and compare objects you know we've been mentioning this um to describe sorts and compare 3d or compare 2d and 3d shapes in terms of number of sh number and shape of faces we did that at the prior knowledge um number of vertices number of edges okay and most recommend uh, recommendations of Caps is to further activities focus on on the characteristics of the objects make 3D uh, models. Actually, we have that as a hands-on activity that we are going to do later on. Okay, this is important. What's the difference between grade five and four? Okay, keep that in mind at your lesson. Okay. According to the caps, it told us to find something that's relative in nature to what we are lear learning. And we have, we've mentioned pi pineapples, okay? We've mentioned honeycombs from previous page. We've mentioned brick. If 
this is the the thing that I said in class is that if uh, we I literally just pointed out a brick on the brick wall of the class and I said if you look at the brick on its own yeah uh, let me just draw for a minute if you were to look at the brick as it is like this which shape which shape is it is it 2d or 3d and the all answer 2d and I said if you to take out the brick and hold it as it is as this man is holding it as it's full brick alone which shape is it and they all answer 3d so be very um be very mindful that you, of your uh, resources and environments and i also place this um as a, an example in reality because they did this in grade five social science they learned about the tomb of the 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 mummy you know you know the pharaoh and just learning about um reminding them what they learned in social science about the pyramid of giza in, in egypt this is a pyramid you know just getting them to refer to what they already know so that they can build up better uh, understanding of the contents at hand okay Looking at the activity I said uh, for our learning, teaching and learning, I said showing ver various types of 3D shapes and objects within re real life in the worksheets, which we have done, and we use on hands on activities with the models of uh, 3D shapes to count the number of vertices, number of edges, number and shape of faces. And so that is exactly what caps asked us to do with that i have done the liberty to do exactly just that ex exercise one well, turned it into a game and i told the children here's our worksheets i gave the children every each one of them the worksheets separated them into groups of five okay for each member since my class was about 22 okay and each group each column hey represents one round one round two round three round four and within five minutes they are to answer uh each question so each question is actually worth not each one this one is one question this is worth two because number and shape th those are two answers okay the next one is worth one minute altogether i gave them five minutes per round and the moment they finish the five minutes was out I um, I told them the moment I finished the uh, the question, they were to um, shout out the group name or number so that they can tell me the answer. And if they get it right, they get a point. Okay, that's the game. Um, to further how to play the game. I just explained group and vase, fill each column with your group. Well, with this one, it's very crucial because now in the small, using the small group uh, teaching strategy, you have to tell them, help your classmates, help your peer, how to answer this, how to answer that, how to answer this, how to count the faces, how to count the ages, work together. And for me to consider your question, your answer in the group, and to to not be disqualified every each group member should have the same writing okay and the corrections will be done by me uh, the second requirement during as a discussion before we get to the second round okay the second requirements of course i said i'll be the referee each point is worth each title question is worth one point except for this one is an exception I was explained previously the groups with the most points win the game and the last shape is worth extra 10 marks why because oh here's a five minutes mark because the reason why we want to make it um the last point 10 marks is because if you want to use the if you want to have an addition of what a game board it's optional with pieces for each group 
let's say each group the first group got six rods and the second group got four rods and the third group got 10 rods and the the next group you know since there's a total of 25 points maybe the highest one will probably end up at 15 and the second highest will be at 10 you know uh, no no no, it can't be a 10 maybe at six right obviously this one is winning the game so to even out use the bonus point for whoever was going to get there right the mission is not really to finish the board it's really the furthest one to the start is the winner so playing the game what would you need you would need a scoreboard which is what i just um wrote out here the name of the groups and the score in tally this is the easiest way you can do it you will need the 3d shapes models draw the shapes on the board if unavailable or just have both it's still um, a good option as i mentioned game board is optional with pieces of to show each group okay Alrighty, here's what I used. This was my board at the time. Okay, I used uh, the the hands-on eight activity of 3D models. As you can see, they even is like labels the shapes. As you can see, the kids holding it. And here's my board, the dates, the title, the table which they have. Please ignore this. This was at the time where each group uh was uh giving me objects uh options on how many edges were it was intense really they were all enjoying it so much this was a tie between this was literally the last question with the bonus uh questions where group three and group four had the same answer so it was a tie at the end this is where i explained i first started out writing the rectangular and then i extended it into 3 3d shape to explain how the transformation from 2d shape to 3d shape actually happens this was the tally for group one group two group three group four group five and at the end um group three won uh, ultimately because they had 10 um marks uh 10 points and the other one Oh, I forgot to write down had an addition I think it was uh, four no no three three and four I had yes four was just not having a good time they had one point but they had it uh, a tie and gained 10 points so it was 11 and 15 at the end um, of the lesson see as I recommended if you don't have shapes like I did draw the board draw on the board um to make it uh, much more accessible for the child besides the worksheets okay all right in closure uh phase lesson summary is very important this is where you use discussion as a teaching uh, um, strategy so that the child can just um really uh, it's you and the child discussing what you learned the differences similarities you know um just really summarizing the whole lesson along with your learners In summary we have learned the shapes the difference between that they have uh, between 2d and 3d and we say 3d has three dimensions and excuse this was supposed to be linked um uh, the um, examples uh, vert, uh, vertex and edges as Caps wanted to teach in grade 6. Now the difference, Caps also mentioned you should explain the difference between uh, pyramid and uh, tetrahydron and in, in obvious, um, obvious observations excuse me, is that tetrahedron um, it has the same faces all around they all are identical but for pyramid it may have another shape of a polygon okay at the as a base but for tetrahedron it really it literally has the same identical faces that can be used as a base or just a normal face altogether. but what 
a pyramid is different since the bot of the base is really um, another polygon uh, different from the face of Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, comment on what you want uh, to see next on the previous uh, on the present video and like please do it will be very much well appreciated. Thank you for joining me student teachers. Have a lovely one. Bye.